Is it working now? Okay. There is a re- there is a reason why Okay. The re- there's a reason why the gospels don't say anything about when Jesus saw the crowds he went up on the mountain with his tech crew and set up his Zoom and um established his wireless network and then spoke to them. Um this is why. So Are we are working or we are okay so i'll say again good morning and welcome to worship with the congregation of the presbyterian church at peace chapel we're sorry for all of the um of the little surprises today but i we think we've got our technology working on the same project that we're working on again so if you're out in zoom world We are glad you are here with us, and um, you'll see the bulletin there on your screen, and it will scroll through as we go through worship, and we invite you to read aloud with us the parts that are in bold print and sing along with the songs. Um, For the offering, of course, you can't come up to the plate, but you can use the Venco Mobile Faith Engagement app, V-A-N-C-O. Enter that into your Google search or into your phone's into your phone's app store and it will help you find that and then enter in when you've got that downloaded enter in presbyterian church at peace chapel and they will help you give electronically or you can just do the old-fashioned thing and write a check put it in an envelope and mail it to 1212 livingston avenue in north brunswick 08902 children are encouraged to have paper and pencil or crayons handy to draw pictures during the sermon I think that's all the things we need to know to start getting ready for worship. So I'm going to ask Chris to play through our gathering song. I'm going to ask those of us who feel up to standing to stand, and um, we will sing it once in English and once in Swazi. God, my brothers, we will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters, we will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. See so humbanaye, wo wo wo, see so humbanaye. Siso hambanaye, wo wo wo, siso hambanaye. Nyom pa wenja bula, siso hambanaye. Nyom pa wenja bula, siso hambanaye. Let us worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. All the power mongers are before God, worshiping. All the poor and the powerless, too, worshipping, along with those who never got it together, worshipping. Our children and their children will get in on this as the word is passed from parent to child. Babies not yet conceived will hear the good news. God does what God says. Chris is going to play through the psalm, and then we will all sing. My shepherd is the great I am, who is, was, and will be, who gives me shelter, food, and drink, who leads me safe and free. When 
I must walk in deepest dark. My shepherd takes my fear. Your discipline and saving strength assure me you are near. You lay a banquet in the sight of my most dangerous foes. There bless my shepherd I delight. And my cup overflows. Your loving, kind, amazing grace pursues me, fills my soul. God, shepherd, anywhere with you is home, my whole life long. Beloved in Christ, I wish you grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. God spoke all these words, saying, I am the one who is and ever shall be, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourselves any graven image. You shall not take the name of of the Creator, your God, in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet anything that is your neighbor's. We hear God's word, but we do not always listen. We know the way to peace, but we often lose our way. And so God, who is faithful and just, forgives us, lets us turn our lives around, lets us begin anew in the confidence of that promise, in the confidence of our baptism. Let us now confess our sins and leave our burdens at God's feet so that we may go forth free and forgiven. Let us do this using the prayer we find on our screens or in our leaflets. Let us pray. We who have gone astray because we are distracted or stubborn, hear you calling us back, O God. We hear your word, your way to live in peace, but we have lost our way, lost sight of your will, lost hope for what can be, resigning ourselves to what we think must be. For all the wrong turns we have taken, forgive us, O God, for all the ways we have denied true life. Forgive us, O God, for all our short-sightedness and willful blindness. Forgive us, O God, for all the times we failed to notice your care. Forgive us, O God. For all the occasions when we thought we knew better, forgive us, O oh God. God, turn us around and make a fresh start in us. Open our eyes to your real presence in our lives, our world, our history. Lead us in your true way that we might live your new life and share it with all the world. 
Hear these words that we may trust from the prophet Isaiah. Remember these things, O Jacob. Take it seriously, Israel, that you are my servant. I made you, shaped you. You're my servant. O Israel, I'll never forget you. God has wiped the slate of our wrongdoings. There is nothing left of our sins. Come back to me, says God. Come back. I've redeemed you. Believe this good news and live in peace. And hear these words from the Apostle Paul. Since we were justified by, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. Let us greet one another with a hand of fellowship and the peace of Christ. Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Did Lillian get the wonderful bonus bulletin this week? <laughs> Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice that began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice that began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. We come to our time now when we um, talk to the young children about Bible stories and um, all of that before we have the Bible story and worship and, and then have um, sermons and good things. And so if you're out in Zoom world and you're one of the young children, this is the time to be listening. And if you're just young at heart, you can do this too. So that's fine. And I'm going to play a little game of I Spy with you. I'll bet you've all played I Spy. Where you have to figure out what it is that I am spying when I say it begins with this letter. So... I spy with my little eye something that starts with F. I wonder if you know. Well, I'm going to tell you. It's right here. The place where we, get, where we baptize folks we often call a font. So it starts with F. But now I'm going to say I spy with my little eye something that starts with B. What do you think? I'm going to tell you, it's the same thing. Because it's a bowl. So it can be something that starts with B, or it can be something that starts with F. And it depends on how we talk about it and on the way we look at it. And that's important because... Our Bible story today, our story from 1 Samuel, is all about how we look at things. So this is called 1 Samuel, the first book of Samuel, and there's a second Samuel that follows. And if you ever wondered, they were probably all one book of Samuel at some point in time, and when they were being copied down, they didn't have enough space on the first scroll to get the whole book of Samuel in, so they stopped and they started a second scroll, and suddenly it became first and second Samuel then. But in this story, Samuel is being sent out to, an, to anoint the new king whom God has chosen. And he's going to be looking at the sons of Jesse. And he's going to look at different sons of Jesse, and he's not 
going to fight, and he's going to think he knows which one should be king. And God's going to say no. And then he thinks, oh, another one. God's going to say no. And he's going to be surprised a little bit by the one whom God says is the one to be king. And this is because God looks at things differently from the rest of us. God doesn't always see things the same way. So listen to this story and be thinking about that, how God sees things differently, and that's okay. And then we'll have another story, well, really a piece of a letter, a letter to the Ephesians. Ephesians were people who lived in a place called Ephesus. And Paul writes to them. He had visited them a long time before, and now he writes a letter to them. And he's going to be talking about how we have to be careful about how we live because we have to remember that things are being seen and we have to remember that we should be living in the light so that everybody can see what we're doing and we shouldn't worry about that and that that's very different from living in the darkness. So all of this is about how we see and what we see and about looking at things the way God would look at them and looking at what God would think is important because it's not always the same as what we think is important. We might think somebody being big and strong is important. We might think how they look right this minute now is important. And God, of course, sees not only how they look right this minute now, but what they want to be and what they're going to be. And God lets us be thinking about why these other things are important and why it's important to be thinking about what we what somebody wants to become and puts hope in this. God is looking at things with hope. So listen to the stories and be thinking about how does God look at us? And how can we be people whom God sees with hope? And what do you think God's hope is for us? And then during the sermon, if you'd like, you can draw a picture about the Bible story or about um, how you think God does that. Okay? Now, of course, we always have a prayer before Bible story, and during Lent, we're singing our prayer. So we're going to sing our prayer, and then we'll have our stories. Let's pray. Listen to the word that God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice that began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. Okay. Listen for a word from God in this story from the first book of Samuel. One day God said, Samuel, I've rejected Saul, and I refuse to let him be king any longer. Stop feeling sad about him. Put some olive oil in a small container and go visit a man named Jesse who lives in Bethlehem. I've chosen one of his sons to be king. Samuel said, how can I go? If I do that, Saul will find out and have me killed. And God said, take a calf with you. Tell everyone you've come to offer it as a sacrifice to me. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice. When I show you which one of his sons I have chosen, pour the olive oil on his head. Samuel did what God told him and went to Bethlehem. The town leaders went to meet him. But they were terribly afraid and asked, is this a friendly visit? He said, yes, it is. I've, I've come to sacrifice to God. Get yourselves ready and take part in the sacrifice and come with me to get ready to take part in the sacrifice and come with me. Samuel also invited Jesse and his sons to come to the sacrifice and he got them ready to take part. When Jesse and his sons arrived, Samuel noticed Jesse's oldest son, Eliab, and thought, he has to be the one whom God has chosen. But God said, Samuel, 
Don't think Eliab is the one just because he's tall and handsome. He isn't the one I've chosen. People judge others by the, what they look like, but I judge people by what is in their hearts. Jesse told his son Abinadab to go over to Samuel. Samuel said, no, God hasn't chosen him. Next, Jesse sent his son Shammah to him, and Samuel said, God hasn't chosen him either. Jesse had all seven of his sons go over to Samuel. Jesse, God hasn't chosen any of these young men. Do you have any more sons? And Jesse said, yes. My youngest son, David, is out taking care of the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We won't start the ceremony until he gets here. Jesse sent for David. He was a healthy, good-looking boy with a sparkle in his eyes. As soon as David came, God told Samuel, he's the one. Get up and pour the olive oil on his head. Samuel poured the oil on David's head while his brothers watched. At that moment, the Spirit of God took control of David and stayed with him from then on. Then Samuel returned home to Ramah. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. In the John Irving novel, The World According to Garp, the title character and his wife are house hunting. When the house that they have just visited, they've just come out, stepped out of that house, is hit by a small plane that's crash landing. Garp immediately blurts out, we'll take the house. Honey, the chances of another plane hitting this house are astronomical. It's been pre-disastered. We'll be safe here. In the Harry Potter books by J.K. Rowling, Luna Lovegood is a student whose worldview is unconventional, which is rather impressive when you think it's already a school for witchcraft and wizardry, so this is not a conventional place. She perceives life in unusual ways, seeing even deeper wonders in their wonder-filled world, things that other people often don't see. But we have Samuel in our story. When Samuel was a young child, he heard God's voice when nobody else could. And he was still pretty well tuned into God's voice, but he tended to hear God best when God called for things the people wanted, like a king. And when Samuel looked for royal attributes, he looked for all the worldly stereotypical things. He's big and strong and looks nice. He'd look good in a campaign ad. That's who the, must be the king. But God was looking for something else, something more. God, who refused to let Saul be king any longer, but still left him on the throne for a dozen or so years, had a different sense of time and urgency than most people and a different perception of a leader. God insists on judging by what God perceives is in people's hearts. God is willing to wait for people to grow into what God hopes for, even when it may not come out as expected. And God seems to hope that Samuel will catch that same vision. God probably hoped for David to catch that same kind of vision as well. Even though God, who sees from eternity, who sees all our history as an ever-present now, as C.S. Lewis wrote, who, who we think should therefore know better, because God sees the part where we're going to get it wrong, sees it all through unwavering hope. Looking through God's unwavering hope, there can be food and shelter for everyone. Looking through God's unwavering hope, there can be justice for everyone. Looking through God's unwavering hope, it is never foolish to let people sort things out or wasteful 
to wait for them to kind of wander into the truth and keep discussing and discussing and discussing until they finally get there. Looking through God's unwavering hope, it's always right to call out for what's right, even when it's unlikely that the world will let it happen. God's unwavering hope waits for us to turn ourselves around to see things as God does. With that in mind, listen for a word from God in this portion of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Watch what God does, and then you do it, like children who copy their parents. Live your lives in love, the same sort of love which Christ gives us and which he perfectly expressed when he gave himself up for us in sacrifice to God. Don't let yourselves be taken in by smooth talk. God gets furious with people who are full of religious sales talk, but who are disobedient. Don't even hang around people like that. Once you were darkness, but now you are light. Live then as children of light. Light produces fruit that consists of every sort of goodness, justice, and truth. Figure out what will please God and then do it. Don't participate in the unfruitful actions of darkness. Instead, you should reveal the truth about them. It's a scandal when people waste their lives on things they must do in darkness where no one will see. For light is capable of showing up everything for what it really is. It is even possible, after all, it happened to you, for light to turn the thing it shines upon into light also. Thus God speaks through, through the scriptures. Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. These are desperate times. Don't live carelessly, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the Lord wants. Don't drink too much wine. That cheapens your life. Drink the Spirit of God, huge drafts of God. Speak to each other with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And serve one another because of your common rever reverence for Christ. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. God's light shows us the safety in the wrecked house and the wonders beyond everyday wonders. God's light gives us the chances for right even in a world where the wrong seems overwhelming. God's light shows us how we can grow our love for one another into justice and hope for everyone around us and in time for all the world. God's light lets us see the banquet laid out to taunt our enemies and lets us see the grace that never stops hunting us down for joy. God's light lets us see things as God does and turn ourselves around God's light lets us watch what God does. And in God's light, we can do it. Let's get started. Let us pray. Write these words in our hearts, dear God, and help them to grow up in us the fruits of your spirit to the honor and praise of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Chris is going to play through the hymn, and then we will all sing.
I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that set the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at God's command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord who filled the earth with food. God formed the creatures through the word, and then pronounced them good. Lord, how thy wonders are displayed wherever I turn my eye. If I survey the ground I tread or gaze upon the sky, there's not a plant or flower below but makes thy glories known. And clouds arise and tempests blow by order from thy throne. While all that borrows life from thee is ever in thy care. And everywhere that we can be, thou God art present there. And now let us affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Again, I welcome everybody to worship this morning. I am so glad that you all can be here with us, either here in the chapel or out in Zoom world. We are getting to the time where we will share our joys and our concerns as we get ready for prayers. But first, I will... So that means, folks in Zoom world, you should be turning off your mutes. And if you're on a phone, you do that by pressing star six. But, and while you're doing all of that, I will share a few things that are going on in the next couple of weeks. First of all, the session is meeting today after worship, and so um, we will do that. Some of us will be there by Zoom, but I'm hoping a lot of us are here in the chapel. We'll see. Saturday is food distribution at Bayard Street Presbyterian Church. Um, our monthly food distribution is part of our mission partnership. That all happens through the Joyce Kilmer Avenue door between 9.30 and noon. So anybody who wants to come in well help out is certainly welcome. Um, we are continuing through next Sunday to be collecting peanut butter, but of course other non-perishable foods are welcome and they go in the box that is over there. Next Sunday we'll be back again for worship and then after worship next Sunday we will be putting together snack bags that go will go over to Elijah's Promise. These snack bags are used at Elijah's promise to be able to send folks out after lunch with a little snack to get them through the rest of their day. And so, you know, a little bit of something pleasant and cheerful so that they're doing more than just barely getting by, and that's a good thing. So please, um, if you can be here, all the materials will be here and we will just stay after lunch. We've got the bags that we've all been decorating and they're all here collected. So we'll just stay after lunch and we will put the, th the items in the bags. Um, a couple people who are here today, if you can help Carol right after worship to get the um, things that are sitting in her car here into the church, that will be a big help as well. And then two weeks from today, it will be Palm Sunday, which means that Holy Week will have begun. We will begin worship, if the weather lets us, with a little bit of a parade just around the building, not a, big, not a big deal of a parade, but remember that Palm Sunday is a day when there was a parade, and so we will parade a little bit. We will be noisy, 
we will be slightly disorganized, which means we will be just like the parade that happened outside of Jerusalem. And then we will have worship. And then again on Monday, Thursday, the fo that following Thursday, April 6th, we will have worship here in Peace Chapel and also on Zoom. Um, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper and worship around the Lord's table. Worship on Good Friday will be available online beginning at noon. We still could use a couple more people to um, take part in reading the, the story for Good Friday and being part of that worship. We will record on, on Palm Sunday, actually, after worship is over and everybody's gone home. Those of us taking part in that will stay after and we'll record that worship. So if you can be here and can stay a little bit and be one of those readers, please let me know as soon as possible because I'd like to have readings for you next week. And so, and then of course, April 9th, it will be Easter and we will have worship at Easter dawn out in front of, out in front of Peace Chapel and we will welcome whoever can come and we will have hot cross buns after worship and celebrate. Um, worship will be very short. It will be the story and a prayer or two and a couple of songs, but any, we will welcome the day. And then we will have a big festival celebration of the, of the resurrection here inside the chapel at 10 o'clock, our usual worship time. So do we have anybody who has any um, special joys or concerns as we get ready for our prayers today? Carol, yeah, Tom's on his way. Yes, uh, prayers for the family of Stella Flores. Stella passed away uh, a week ago Wednesday. She is the um, grandmother of my daughter, Amy. Oh. Okay, so prayers for her. Anybody else? Pastor James. Okay, um, Helen. Uh, yes, prayers for Nick. Uh, I see Beatrice is on, but... Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, and, and Zach is trying to speak out, out in the Zoom world. That's okay. Yeah, Zach, what's up? Today, so uh, we're home this morning. Sorry we couldn't make it. But Nick's doing well. He's recovering. So continue praying. Oh, praying. that's okay. Nick's doing well, but Beatrice couldn't come, so Zach and Jonathan are home with Nick. Okay, but he's continuing to recover, and they appreciate our prayers. I kind of thought Sam might speak up, but um, I did get a message from Sam this morning. I know he's on out in Zoom world. Um, he is home taking care of Daisy because Daisy needs to have somebody with her right now. But the surgery went well, and everything went well, and he asks for continued prayers. Anybody else? Carol? Uh, yeah, many of us who had children who grew up in the late 70s or in the 80s um, had their children watch uh, PBS uh, to see Mr. Rogers. As many of you know, he was a Presbyterian minister. He passed away in the late 1990s. And um, Presbyterians uh, worldwide are celebrating his legacy on his birthday tomorrow. Okay. So, yes, look for opportunities to celebrate Mr. Rogers' birthday. And remember how he encourage this all to be looking for the people who run towards the trouble and help one another. Good morning, Pastor James. Rita. Martha. Um, <clears throat> springtime is a uh, wonderful... Martha, could you hold on a second? Rita, yeah, go ahead. 
Oh, just a, a prayer for uh, the world, as Sam always asks, and also a prayer for people who are seeking to hurt other people in their minds, whether physically, emotionally, um, or verbally. And um, prayers for all those people that God will touch their hearts uh, to have a change of mind and only want to do good to mankind especially for that person who tried to scam some of us in the name of our pastor, which we all know was totally wrong. Praise goes out to that person, whoever he or she is. Okay. So Rita asks for us to keep the world in prayer, but also to keep especially in prayer people who are seeking to hurt others. Um, a few of us know that um, the other day, someone tried to um, run a scam on some members of our congregation um, online in my name um, on the phone. yeah uh, on on online in the computer and um, had a phone number that wasn't mine um, you should always know everybody i am not going to ask you for any money on online i will not do that um, ever. So if it, if you see a note like that, it is probably a scam. Don't, don't respond. Um, if I'm trying to get in hold, get a hold of you, I will contact you directly. And if I'm, if it's, I mean, if it's just a regular message, like, um, session is on Sunday, yeah, then you'll get an email. But if it's anything more important, I'll be much more direct. Okay. Now, Martha. Um, there are mir miracles for us year-round. Sometimes they're easier to see in the springtime with the return of new life and um, the new life that we receive from the sacrifice of Jesus at Easter time that he gave his life for us. Um, sometimes we are ignorant of the miracles and it reminded me of the story about the person who pulled into the parking lot and said, oh dear Lord, could you please help me find a parking space? And immediately a, a car pulled out and the person had a parking space and then prayed that's okay, Lord, don't worry about it. Someone just left. <laughs> they, they, perhaps they were ignorant of the miracle that had just been bestowed on them. So I would pray again, thanking Jesus for his sacrifice, thanking God for all the miracles to which we are um, exposed, but which we may not recognize. So we thank God for the miracles and we ask for God to open our eyes to see them. Include the miracle of peace. Yes, including the miracle of peace. Okay, Tom has the minute for mission today. Yes, we're still in the season uh, where we will be collecting the one great hour for upsharing uh, offering. And uh, as I've been involved in, in this, this, uh, this season, it, it impresses me the, uh, the worldwide scope of outreach of one great hour of sharing. Uh, those of you who may have picked up the, uh, the brochure describing OGHS and its good work, I'd, I'd recommend you reviewing that. And one of the specific areas that uh, they support uh, is a group in India called Society for National Integration Through Rural Development, uh, or they use the acronym SNRD, uh, which is 
Uh, sounds a little rough, but anyway, uh, it's a, a group that is trying to overcome the the uh, the caste system of uh, of India, and an example is given of a a Dalit woman. Uh, Dalit is the untouchables in uh, India. Uh, her name is Smitha Krishnan, and uh, this woman. Uh, who is a trained seamstress with a family of five children, uh, recently lost her husband, and then lost the only means of making a living, which was her sewing machine, which was washed away in a tsunami there. And so she was left with no means to make an income and with five children to take care of. And uh, through uh, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance and through uh, SNIRD, uh, she got the help that she needed. She was uh, restored in, in terms of, in fact, uh, I can read uh, uh, directly that she uh, was given a permanent shelter and a sewing machine so she could uh, uh, make uh, living once again, and uh, OGHS, One Great Hour of Sharing, helped to make that possible. Uh, and I'll read literally, One Great Hour of Sharing's purpose of helping neighbors in need throughout the world remains constant, giving us a tan tangible way to share God's love, not only through the ministries of Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, but also Presbyterian Hunger Program and self-development of people. And Smitha herself said, because of people's gifts to one great hour of sharing, we now live in a permanent and disaster-resistant shelter. My kids are back in school. I am able to feed and clothe them. And when they get sick, I am able to take care of their medication too. She thanks PDA, SNRD, and one great hour of sharing. So we're not about just helping ourselves. In the times when we were not as wealthy a country as we were. Our people were always looking out to help others, and we should do the same today. So please, give what you can to one great hour of sharing. Uh, when we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. And if you allow me, in closing, I'd like to offer this prayer. Sheltering God, may our gifts and our prayers support those all around this world who have little and whose lives are impacted by floods, famines, and disease. May we show your love in our gifts and, our, and in our lives. Amen. Right. Hear these words from Paul's letter to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And so let us now with gladness present our tithes and our offerings from our life and from our labor unto our God.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us join our hearts and our minds in prayer together. Open our eyes, O God. Open our eyes to see the world, its problems and its promise as you see it. Open our eyes to the needs of your creation. Open our eyes to the pain of all your people, especially those who are driven to seek to hurt others, those who cannot see the miracles all around us, those who are in places of conflict or danger this day, especially the people of Ukraine and the soldiers of Russia, people who are refugees in so many places around the world, refugees from natural disasters, from war, from violence, people who are seeking peace. Open our eyes to really see women and men laying down their lives for the safety of brothers and sisters and neighbors wherever they might be. Open our eyes, please, God. Hear us pray. Open our ears, O God. Open our ears to hear the voices of the world around us as you hear them. Open our ears to hear the voices of the hopeless. Open our ears to the voices of the imprisoned and the abandoned. Open our ears to the voices of those facing change and often frightened by it. Open our ears to the voices of the ill and the infirm. Especially Nick as he continues to recover and Daisy and Bassie and Cornelia and Lawrence who take care of her and Mimi and her grandchildren. Open our ears to the voices of those who grieve especially the family of Stella Flores. Open our ears to the voices we know and those we don't know yet. Open our ears, please, God. Hear us pray. Open our mouths, O God. Open our mouths with your voice that calls all things to be. Open our mouths that we may call out the injustice around us. Open our mouths that we may bring life and hope. Open our mouths to call our leaders to your ways. We pray for our president and representatives, our governor and legislators, people who administer the affairs of our nation, our state, our cities and towns, and those who administer nations and states and cities and towns all around this world, that they might lead us into your truth, your freedom, your peace. Open our mouths with praise and our, our hearts to care that we may be your church. We pray for this congregation gathered here for Nick as he prepares for membership, for our sisters and brothers in and around North and New Brunswick, for churches of the Presbytery of the Coastlands and the Presbyterian Church USA, her colleges, seminaries, missions, and ministries, 
for all those who proclaim your good news wherever they might be. Open our mouths and hearts, please, God. Hear us pray. Open our eyes, O God. Open our ears, O God. Open our mouths and hearts, O God. Open us to your love and hear us as we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior and friend, Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Chris is going to play through the hymn, and then we will all sing. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. Spirit divine, open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear Gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are God's own people in order that together we may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who calls us out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this day and always. And may all God's people say together, Amen.